Spade, why a spadicator? I have heard, I've heard it rumored, I've never seen it myself, but I've heard it rumored there are some two-hand fly anglers that actually fish indicators with uh, stone fly nymphs or even, Lord forbid, uh, egg patterns. And they have been fishing skagit lines or they've been fishing something like um, an airflow 40 plus which is a floating line or a Rio outbound floating line but those lines didn't really perform quite as well so so here's your spadicator it's a hundred and twenty foot line and that allows people to get absolutely amazing long dead drifts the head section is 12 plus 12 24 uh, roughly uh, 34 35 feet long that's a little that's longer than a skagit and it's tapered at both ends the taper is so you can turn over it doesn't just clunk down in a big wad um, this back taper and your really long level handling line allows you to mend this back taper allows you to mend much better than you can with a skagit <coughs> It's got enough mass in this main part of the head to turn over great big indicators and great big flies. What kind of leader? Uh, sometimes 9, 10 foot leader. You can also turn over 14 to 16 foot leaders. With a, the, Your indicator could be as close to 2 or 3 feet from, uh, by the way, these speed indicators are looped at both ends, really nice. Your indicator could be close as uh, two or three feet from the end of your fly line. Uh, you probably don't want it further away because then it's not going to roll over. A lot of the steelhead fishing that these folks do with nymphs uh, and egg patterns, they really don't have more than six to eight feet of a level leader under their indicator. There are rare places where it's really deep. Fish may be laying in 12 feet of water. So they, they want a much longer uh, level uh, piece of uh, tippet below their indicator. But that's the uncommon situation. So how do you choose the right uh, weight? The spadicator lines come in, they, they call them uh, weight forward 6 through weight forward 9. Now this is a Tim Ray Jeff, uh, this is an Echo uh, Spay Rod, it's a 7 weight. I just grabbed this spadicator line out of the box. It's rated as number 7. I fished it, it performs amazingly. And uh, I used two casts, uh, the double spay, right up like this, around and out. It, it cast that indicator and those, uh, no, pardon me, a friend of mine did this and reported it back. I didn't, I, I didn't actually do this, okay? You locate your anchor, swing around, out. It sails your uh, indicator, his indicator out there. Um, circle spay, throws your anchor upstream. You come around, he comes around, and out. You can make really long casts, you can make short casts, you can shoot line, and then he can mend and get a really good dead drift. So, choosing line, if you've got a rod that is rated, it's called a 7 weight, choose a 7 weight spadicator. And uh, seriously, these, these lines do perform much better than the outbounds or the 40 pluses or a lot better than the skagits. Um, so there you go. Spade Would you kit. ever throw a sink tip on that spade of care All line? Of Was it meant to do that? Th thank you for asking. I tried throwing sink tip and it, it was a miserable failure. I have read others that have had, they, they say they've had good success. <laughs> you know, I, I actually did fish it. Okay, I admit it. Yeah, you know. Um, I think if you were to throw a, an airflow poly leader or a Rio Versa leader, uh, 
They're not real heavy. I think the, the trick is throwing a sink tip. You've got a nine foot taper here. On a Skagit line, you've got a six foot taper and it's, it's much more abrupt, it's heavier. So the spadicator really isn't the, I, would no, I, w I don't think anybody could cast 12 feet of T14 on a spadicator. You could cast an intermediate uh, sink tip quite nicely. This casts overhand very nicely, um, with an indicator or without. You could, uh, if, if you're out indicator fishing and you want to switch over to, to swinging flies, uh, it, it turns over, it handles very nicely, it's a great line.